Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from IBM. We have Jay Muehlhofer. He is the director of software-defined infrastructure at the company. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm doing fantastic, Rich. Well, thanks for coming on, Jay. You know, uh, IBM uh, made some announcements last week about software-defined storage, and uh, I was hoping that you and I could talk more about, in a broader sense, about how this might affect uh, HPC. Rich, I'd be happy to. You know, I probably just also want to you know, provide some context. So I came to IBM via the acquisition of platform computing. And so what I hope to cover today is, you know, really what's happened to platform computing through that acquisition. You know, there's also been other IBM assets around HPC, uh, namely GPFS. You know, what's been the evolution of those uh, items as well? And how have they really come together under this concept of software-defined infrastructure and, and how we're now taking these capabilities and expanding them into other initiatives that have sort of bled into the HPC space. And really what IBM is providing is a much broader vision and picture of how HPC can evolve and really embrace a lot of these new technologies and concepts that are, are coming into our space. Well, that sounds terrific. Well, I brought your slides up here, Jay. Why don't we start with that? It's software-defined infrastructure from IBM. Okay, great. And uh, obviously, you've introduced me, so I'm just going to jump into uh, the second slide to provide a little bit of a context here. And uh, you know, every you know slide deck needs to have that marketing slide, starting off on this concept of just you know innovation and design, and really you know why are companies thinking about changing what they're, they're doing today. And it really is that companies almost need to have an innovation uh, first agenda. And it comes back to, again, you know, what are the products that we're delivering? What are the services we're delivering? And, and why do we you know, kind of exist to begin with? And it really is because if you're a, a company or you're an organization, a government research, education, you know, you are trying to do some sort of design or analytics, you know, better, faster, cheaper. You know, how can you improve the fidelity of what you're producing? Start to embrace this massive explosion of data that's happening inside of our environment, as well as this need to uh, get, you know, your, your analysis, your engineering, you know, out to market, you know, to your end consumers, who your customers are uh, faster. And then, you know, we're also under a lot of uh, cost pressures. You know, how can we do this in today's world where budgets are flat and or declining? You know, people are being asked to do more. How can you administer even larger infrastructures? And, and really, it, it requires uh, essentially a new approach to the problem. And so that's going into slide three, you know, taking it down a level, and what do we see as kind of these key trends? And, and really, this is kind of a, a forces diagram. So, you know, at the top, there's just this unquenching demand for additional uh, compute. Um, you know, there's all sorts of new types of applications that are coming into the marketplace. There's more end users that want to tap into a high-performance type computing, uh, you know, infrastructure. Uh, you know, I put an example on here of Hadoop is a new type of application that's bled into space. I'll go into more detail and even more types of applications. But again, everybody wants to tap in these type of resources. And what's really interesting about it is that more and more applications are leveraging a cluster, a scale-out type of uh, infrastructure. People used to say clusters and grids. You know, it sounds you know, a little bit old. You know, it's been around for a while, but it's, it's really in vogue now, and you're starting to see people use it more broadly. On the supply side at the bottom, uh, people are saying, okay, you know, against this demand, how do I provide the resources, whether they're compute, data, or networking resources? How can I take uh, advantage of the latest technologies around GPUs? How can I take advantage of the cloud? So here an example I put in software, which is a company that's a, a cloud infrastructure as a service provider that IBM acquired uh, you know, less than two years ago and has really built out many more data centers. They just announced four more. It's really a global network that people can tap into to support these types of applications. Uh, on the left side, efficiency. People are trying to get more out of what they already own. 
Um, and that's software-defined storage. As we made some big announcements, I'll go into that in more detail. And on the right, business agility. So changing business requirements. How do I respond more quickly to my end users? And people are using things like OpenStack. Um, you know, just the last uh, year at Supercomputing, you know, we had more and more people talking about OpenStack infrastructures. How do you develop your own internal private cloud and to very rapidly deploy resources to those end users in a self-service manner, and then be able to do things like chargeback and, and everything else you need to be able to manage that overall environment. So moving on to slide four, you know, obviously this impacts everybody in the IT side. You know, there's more projects, you know, you have increased volume of workload, competing priorities, more demands on the infrastructure. Uh, you know, how are you adding more servers, more heterogeneous type environments, you know, really addressing um, some of the newer technologies, um, and then, you know, just less time. Uh, you know, how do you do more, more, more with fewer resources? And that's really where, on slide five, we introduce the concept of software-defined infrastructure. Now, uh, you know, a common question I get is, you know, I've heard about software-defined data centers, software-defined environments. You know, what, what, is, what does IBM mean by software-defined infrastructure, and why did we adopt that term? And it's really because a software-defined data center is thinking about one data center. We really think about multiples of them. They can be located around the world. They can be heterogeneous. How do we build out that broader infrastructure to manage, um, you know, all those different types of resources? And fundamentally, it's all about getting people out of cluster, uh, cluster sprawl. So taking these disparate infrastructure silos and bringing them together, consolidating them virtually, if necessary, sometimes physically, into an elastic shared resource pool that anybody can tap into available either on-premise or on the cloud. You know, we have a lot of people that are asking us about the cloud. How do they safely and securely embrace it? Um, and ultimately, you can see kind of two big value props that people are looking for. Uh, one is that they want to accelerate the time to results for their uh, high-performance type applications. In the HPC space, simulation, design, and research, uh, it can be analytics, it could be big data, and really drive that throughput. Now, we did a study with uh, the platform computing LSF solution where we did a benchmark and showed that we had a better throughput than a, a, a portfolio of other uh, you know, providers by up to 150x which is pretty dramatic. So if people haven't checked out that benchmark, you can do that. Um, and then on the right side, you know, dramatically reduce IT cost by really increasing that utilization. Get people out of silos, thinking about your, just your department or maybe one or two areas. How can you bring this together more broadly and drive up to a 4X type utilization increase? And fundamentally, it all comes down to being able to pool resources, aggregate them into one shared global compute and data, and that's an absolute critical point is that a lot of our clients aren't just thinking about compute. They want to do the data-aware scheduling. They really want to manage this in a much more dynamic manner, uh, connect those resources together so that you can actually, uh, with the different groups and applications, to plug those in at the top, and then as well as having the workload engines to maximize performance at scale, and finally to optimize that. So when you do the initial placement of uh, a workload onto a resource, you know, the type of resources change over time. How do you dynamically move the job to optimize the overall resources and throughput of the overall system? Absolutely critical. And so that brings me on to slide six. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit coming in from the top on the application uh, down, and then the next couple slides build up from the infrastructure up. So what we see is that there's a lot of different uh, groupings of applications. On the left here, you see the high-performance analytics, which is very low latency, you know, parallel, you know, sub-millisecond type response, things like, you know, fraud, risk analytics. Um, in the middle there, moving to the right, we see people that are interested in Hadoop, big data applications. You know, IBM has its big insights portfolio, Cloudera. You know, high-performance computing, which we're all very familiar with. You know, there's hundreds of logos that could be put there. And on the right, we're seeing also an interest in these, what we're calling long-running services, or these application frameworks. Now, all these different types of groups of applications are typically built into silos, and they don't need to be. What you want to be able to do is share the resources across them. Now, if you look from left to right, it's actually very low-latency applications to very long-running on the far right. 
But what we found is that the type of workload engine that you need for each of these different classes of applications is different. So we have ones that are optimized in each one. So a lot of people are probably familiar with platform LSF, but if you have a super low latency application, like in financial services type things, or other you know kind of you know kind of near real time analytics, we have Platform Symphony. We have a MapReduce solution built specifically for big data and Hadoop, or we have the Platform Application Service Controller for these long running applications like Spark, MongoDB, and Cassandra. And what's really important is that we see more people have more of these different type of applications that they want to plug into that common resource management layer. So you may start with one and expand out over time. It's just such a powerful concept. And it's very different from only having one workload engine optimized to one type of uh, workload that you're trying to repurpose. And these are really built, purpose-built for those specific applications. So if we move on to slide seven, what you'll see here is that this software-defined infrastructure, now I've built down the next couple layers. So I'm going to go and talk about this from the bottom up and come back up to that resource management layer, is that we see people have all this very heterogeneous world of resources. Um, you know, flash, tape, disk, you know, they have different compute, power, x86, we, you know, Linux on Z. Um, and these people are also adopting new technologies like Docker or heterogeneous, you know, virtualization all the way to cloud-type resources like SoftLayer. And people want to tap into all these resources as if they were just virtually one. And that's really what the IBM Software I Find infrastructure capability does, leveraging a lot of the platform computing technologies. So you can see in the infrastructure management layer, moving up the bare metal provisioning and the virtual machine provisioning. We've also built in a very deep integration with OpenStack. We've actually replaced the scheduling engine inside of it with platform technologies um, and also can build those uh, you know, clusters out with a platform cluster manager solution. On top of that, we have now launched IBM Spectrum Storage, which is IBM's new um, you know, uh, solution for the complete software-defined storage space. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on that in the next slide. And on top of that, you have the resource management. Now, what you see here, then, is a complete stack from the applications to the infrastructure, a full software-defined infrastructure middleware layer that can manage and be that software switch to connect the applications to the right resources dynamically leveraging you know, all the great technology that we've seen historically in platform computing in the HPC space, but now broadened out to a much larger class of applications. And we even see on the, the top right there, there's other applications that are not uh, more of these you know, high performance type applications that can also plug in and leverage spectrum storage um, you know, there are block, you know, type applications or traditional applications that may also want to leverage OpenStack as well as SoftLayer. So it's really important that you can, con you know, combine both your HPC type applications, your traditional applications, as well as some of these new era type applications that could be mobile or social type applications that still need the, all the great technology capabilities of things like Spectrum Storage as well as the platform cluster manager but not, might not be leveraging the full resource management layer. But we'll see over time that we will expand the number of workload engines for other types of application classes where it makes sense. So it's really important for people when they invest in this, they see that they're investing in something that's extensible and will continue to grow over time. Now, moving on to slide eight, I want to go a little bit more detail about the new Spectrum storage uh, announcement that happened uh, recently. So we announced over a billion dollar investment over the next five years in, in uh, software-defined storage. What IBM is undoing is it is unleashing all the software intelligence in its storage solutions and making them available as software, either as pure software, as a cloud-based service, or in many cases as part <clears throat> of an appliance. And what we have here is a complete uh, portfolio. So you can see that we've grouped them into three big areas, one around agility, uh, control, and efficiency. And it's really important to connect these back to the value props depending upon what your objectives are. And again, you can start with any one of these and expand over time or use combinations of them where it makes sense. So for example, in the case of agility, one of the big announcements we made was Spectrum Accelerate. 
Now, that historically been based on a technology that was in the XIV solution, but now we've made available as software and is also available as a service on, um, on software. And what <clears throat> Spectrum Accelerate does is it allows you to create your own virtual private cloud in minutes versus weeks for your traditional block type applications. Now, also on the slide here, you see under the agility, um, under the concept of elasticity, is spectrum scale. Now, spectrum scale is based upon the technology that was in GPFS and then went for a short period of time into something codenamed Elastic Storage. And we did that because we knew that we were going to be renaming the rest of the portfolio. But what it signals is that we're making a massive investment in that technology to grow it and to expand the number of use cases and to make it a lot more usable out of the gate, as well as making its capabilities available on things like software. So Spectrum Scale really is that file and object solution. It scales to, you know, theoretically a yottabyte of data. Um, it really supports all these big data type applications as well as your cloud applications, as well as the historical HPC uh, arena type of requirements for a file solution. Now, in the control area, it's all about how do you manage all your data. So, you know, you want to be able to manage it, whether it's located on premise, you know, in the cloud, anywhere around the globe. And so it essentially unifies that and simplifies the management of all your, your storage and your data, and well as adding things like governance, so Spectrum Protect. And then finally, on the right, efficiency. For you know, your traditional type applications, you want to be able to virtualize that block storage. We have Spectrum Virtualize that does that across a heterogeneous portfolio of storage, as well as manage the placement of that into the lowest cost arena uh, with Spectrum Archive. So what's really important is that it brings together the capabilities to manage all your data and put the data in the right place to maximize that trade-off between performance, maybe putting it on flash, or cost efficiency if you want to move it out to tape or actually into long-term cloud storage to really you know, get the most cost efficiencies out of their solution. But what's really important about this is that it's proven technology. It's based upon technologies that have been bulletproof proven at companies. Open standards integrates with things like OpenStack and Hadoop and modular adoption so you can start with any of these and grow it over time. So moving on to slide nine, you know, the benefits here I think are really important is that the benefits we see at all levels of the organization. A lot of times we're talking to the IT managers who are really trying to, you know, reduce that cost while maintaining the service levels, being responsive to the, to the end users. How do they bring together all these silos of compute and data and really adopt new technologies? For end users, they, just, they really don't care where the, the application is running. They just want to get their results back. They want to be able to, you know, faster. They want to be able to use more data, and they want it to be easy to use. They want it to be built into their existing solutions so that they don't have to learn something new. And for the CIO or the, the CXO type level, you know, they want to be able to essentially lower their risk, uh, become more agile as an overall organization, and, and constrain the growth of costs over time. So, you know, how can they, you know, do more strategic investment and get more agile in what they're doing? And finally, let me talk about one of our historical customers that really is seeing a lot of their use cases expand in many of these different directions that I've talked about uh, today. So that is the Sanger Institute and what they're doing around the Human Genome Project. You know, they're really focused on understanding the role of genetics in health and disease and really understand how that can be translated into diagnostics, treatments, and therapies that reduce global health burden. So a fantastic mission. And they have been a long-term user of the platform LSF uh, solution as well as platform analytics to really optimize the entire uh, policy-based workload schedule and environment. But they're also expanding into other areas to trying to make better leverage of the data so looking at how do they do that with things like software-defined storage, as well as other technologies. So looking at you know, cloud-type technologies to get more agility in their organization, as well as you know, things that are you know, leveraging new technologies 
like Docker. And, you know, based upon their use of LSF, you know, things that we have announced with a built-in Hadoop connector uh, with a, you know, the ability to support Docker environments to be able to send workloads to uh, the soft layer cloud, it really gives them the flexibility and agility that they're going to need to not only today, solve today's problems, but the problems of the future as well. So hopefully that gave everyone a, a quick introduction to the concept of software-defined infrastructure, uh, you know, how it's expanding, but it's really built upon the foundation of technologies that we have been leveraging in the HPC space and shows how HPC has really broken out into a lot of different areas of organizations and commercial enterprises today. Well, well thanks for that, Jay. You know, it, it was interesting watching this talk evolve it, you know what there was a lot of a uh, of the DNA from from platform computing uh, in the first couple of slides and um, and then you got to the the software defined part but what do you think is causing all the confusion out there about software defined where does that come from that's a great question so I think there's a lot of confusion because there's so much interest, there's so much potential in the benefits that one can get out of moving towards a software-defined environment by unlocking the innovation and agility, defining things in software, you can actually have faster releases um, as well as be able to connect to these heterogeneous type of uh, environments. Uh, really what that gives people is the ability to automate their environments and adopt those uh, latest technologies in a much more agile and fluid way. But the confusion stems from the fact that there are other vendors out there that don't truly have software-defined uh, offerings but are trying to wrap that moniker around any old solution and claim it to be software-defined. You know, it's interesting, uh, you know, IBM was just ranked uh, by IDC as the number one provider of software-defined storage platforms. And, uh, you know, it really they took a look at what we offer and, uh, you know, the flexibility and, you know, really the ability to deliver it in a software-only form factor so that people can deploy it in many different places, both on-premise and the cloud. And so, again, you know, you know, these other vendors, you know, they only have one option, and so they, they try to apply it to everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything has software in it, right? Storage devices, uh, you name it. You, you need drivers and things like that, and that's part of what makes it work. But, but Jay, I mean, uh, when I was listening to your talk, you know, I, I remember the talks from Platform and how you guys were rolling out your vision. I wanted to ask you about, you know, now that you're part of IBM, has that really, you know, that broader range of resources, has that enabled, you know, the, the vision from Platform to really come together as this software-defined infrastructure that we heard about today? It really has. So, you know, Platform obviously uh, has always had great technology and really the ability to uh, handle a lot of complexity that you see in some of the largest environments out there when you go into massive EDA type of environments. Uh, but what we've seen is that a lot of the, uh, the enterprises have the, the similar challenges in being able to take that, you know, technology capability and apply it to many other workloads. Now, obviously at IBM, you know, gives us a great access to distribution, um, the ability to work with the uh, sales client teams and have that CIO type level, uh, you know, conversation, as well as, you know, really understand the problems across a, a lot of different areas. Now, you can already see it just in this presentation, you know, talking about, you know, connecting uh, the platform computing technology to software very deeply and natively. You know, that's something uh, could not have done, you know, by its own, and, and really nothing that, you know, other HPC vendors can offer both that deep on-premise as well as that cloud capability. Also, the things around software-defined storage, um, you know, being a provider of that, you know, file and object, you know, uh, data management solution as well as on the compute side. So we can do things that really optimize across those boundaries. Now, there's other players out there that might just be, you know, in the, the, the workload management or job scheduling area. They don't have a, a file management solution like that that they can do that kind of, you know, R&D type level integration as well as build those roadmaps. So deep things, I mentioned data where scheduling is, you know, a simple example of one of those, but also doing that across a very distributed on-premise as well as cloud type of environment. 
So again, you know, phenomenal resources that uh, IBM can bring and invest in to really, uh, you know, expand the vision that was was platform computing into the larger concept of software defined infrastructure. Yeah, and and I wanted to clarify uh, uh Jay, this this idea of uh you talked about heterogeneous you know, data centers being kind of that that's what they are today, right? There there's no such thing as a homogeneous thing where it's all IBM equipment, right? Does this vision you've described, I mean, does it play well with others? It, does it work for all kinds of different type of vendor solutions as terms of hardware? It it definitely does. Yeah. So um you know that's one thing that's really important. Obviously uh you know we have a long history of working with multiple X eighty six providers there is nothing changed in what we're doing there. You know, IBM does have its, uh, you know, power architecture and open power, and there's a lot of great uh, use cases that, you know, support that, you know, especially in the big data arena. And, you know, we'll continue to, you know, build out those integrations there. But that's where, you know, you have platform computing, um, you know, spectrum scale, which is, you know, based upon, you know, the, the technology that uh, was in GPFS. You know, again, you know, these are, you know, great, uh, you know, technologies that maintain their openness um, and the ability to work with open standards. And that, that's part and parcel and just core to what we're doing, uh, you know, going forward. Well, great. Well, I'm glad you brought up GPFS because I think this is the third time you've renamed it, uh, right? So you had Elastic Storage, GPFS. <laughs> well, well, you know, uh, it, it makes sense the way you, you plugged it in here. Uh, you know, is, is this the end game now? This is this is GPFS going forward. Is this much broader kind of stroke? Correct. So yes, uh, we we will not be renaming it. So <laughs> you know, we have the Spectrum Storage family yeah. of solutions, which is you know obviously it shows a, a breadth that you know we can provide there. It's based upon you know proven technologies, and I think that's you know one of the the other great things about it. You know, obviously, GPFS is a very powerful solution, but really uh, investing it and, you know, while it's been powerful, it also had some, you know, limitations and almost being too powerful. And uh, But now with Spectrum Storage and, you know, that becoming Spectrum Scale, you know, it really is this concept of, you know, built on proven, uh, you, know, uh, you know, customer deployments, this flexibility um, and, you know, being part of something that IBM is making a very large investment in. You know, billion-dollar investment in the, the Spectrum storage family is, is fairly significant, and uh, Spectrum scale is definitely uh, going to be benefiting from that. And the answer to your question is no, we will not be renaming it again. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that comes to the final question, Jay. It was like, can customers get this stuff today? They definitely can. So everything that I've spoken about today uh, is available um, you know, what I recommend is that you work with uh, IBM, work with your, I, you know, one of the IBM partners and or you can uh, reach out to us on uh, IBM.com backslash, you know, platform computing uh, is a great way to get started. I know a lot of people, you know, you probably use that as their, their starting point, uh, point or you can do it, uh, you know, with Spectrum Storage. So IBM.com slash Spectrum Storage. And those are, are great starting points to get into the whole software defined infrastructure conversation. Well, terrific. Well, Jay, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Thank you, Rich. My pleasure. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.